Frank Milton Gleason, my great-grandfather, was born on June 14, 1907, and grew up in Salem, New Hampshire. As a teenager, he attended Tilton Prep School, and sometime after graduating, he was convinced by a friend who was attending the University of Chattanooga Law School at the time to move south and enroll in the university. After only one year of attending law school, he passed the bar exam and, having been convinced to stay in the South by my great-grandmother, began to practice law in Tennessee and Georgia, earning him the nickname of Daniel Webster. Gleason continued practicing law and made many friends through his passionate hobby of horseback riding. Gleason had many horses and his own stable, and loved riding through the open parks of Georgia and Tennessee. Gleason regarded riding almost as a second job, and was such a skilled equestrian that the 6th Cavalry at Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia, invited him personally to ride with them. It was not long before the Second World War came about, and Gleason was eager to do his part. After finally convincing my great-grandmother, he joined the army as a captain. After completing his testing, he was immediately sent to the University of Michigan's Judge Advocate School. After completing his training there, he was promoted to the rank of major and was assigned as a judge advocate to the 89th Division. While my great-grandfather was in the 89th, the division had one of the most impacting events of the war, and this was the first American liberation of a Nazi concentration camp, Buchenwald. Up until April of 1945, the American army had not stepped foot into a concentration camp, and only a few months earlier had the Russians liberated Auschwitz. Buchenwald, one of the three camps set up in 1933 in Germany, was the nucleus of the concentration camp system, consisting of Sachsenhausen in the north and Dachau in the south. The first part of the Buchenwald system to be liberated was a work camp named Ordorf. Ordorf was a work camp near the town of Gata, which the 89th liberated on April 4, 1945. My great-grandfather, as a senior judge advocate officer in the 89th Division, was charged with gathering evidence for use in what would become the Nuremberg Trials. Gleason, who had heard rumors of buried bodies, forced the citizens of Gata to help dig up the bodies, a tradition which many Americans would follow when liberating other camps. Because Gleason was gathering evidence, we are lucky to see him in many of the photos, as his presence was required so that he could advocate for the legitimacy of the date, time, and contents of the photo. He is easily identifiable and can be seen wearing a slightly oversized helmet and is often the shortest man among them. Please note, many of the following images are extremely graphic. Shown here is General Eisenhower and many other high-ranking officers viewing the atrocities that had happened at Ordorf. Because this day, April 12th, is the day before the photos of Gleason were taken, it is likely that Gleason, as one of the senior judge advocates and an officer who had seen the entire liberation, met with General George Patton and other high-ranking officers who then commissioned him to take the photographs. After Gleason was relieved from active duty in August of 1945, he returned to his family and law practice in Georgia. 
A man of high moral standards, he often took cases pro bono and fought constantly for justice. One of his most notable cases came in 1953, with the defense of a black man named Avery. The whole thing was, he was, a man named Avery was accused of raping a white woman. And so he took the case, and during the time when they chose the jury, they used to have a choice of everybody who was a black possible jurist to write their name down on yellow pieces of paper. And if you were going to possibly be chosen as a, another member of the jury and you were white, your name was written on a piece of white paper. So when they came to choose the jurist, <laughs> It seemed that all of the white lawyers involved in this would choose the white pieces of paper. So the man uh, was convicted first time, and so my father took it to, to the appellate court, and he was uh, all uh, convicted again. Then he took it on to the Supreme Court of the United States. Now, my mother and father weren't very wealthy people and they were trying to rear a family. He got in his little car and he took, he drove all the way from Rossville, Georgia to the Supreme Court of the United States once they had heard the, well, you know, you don't get there unless the, the Supreme Court justices decide that you have a valid reason that you should be there and be represented. So he went up there and to Washington, D.C. In those days, the roads were not too good. That didn't come around until Eisenhower changed those things about roads. But he drove there, he won, and this case is one of the first civil rights movement cases that can be recognized by Frank Glisson as being one of the first revolutionary people that thought that. The United States Supreme Court under Chief Justice Frederick Vinson reviewed the case and found that Avery, under the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, was unfairly discriminated against. This reversed the decision of the Georgia State Court and was a milestone for the civil rights of Southern blacks. Frank Gleason continued living in the South for the rest of his life, holding many positions on different boards and becoming one of the most respected members of the community. Though I do not have time to list all of his other accomplishments or tell his other stories, I will finish with two particularly important events. In 1945, for his involvement in World War II, he was awarded the Bronze Star for his actions, one of the highest military decorations. Later, in 1991, he was honored with the naming of the new highway, which was to bypass the Chickamauga Battlefield Park, a park where he often rode horses. The Department of Transportation cited his commitment to the community and to justice. Frank M. Gleason died only a couple of years later, in 1995, and he will always be remembered for valiantly fighting for the rights of the oppressed, be it in Europe or in America. <laughs>